Carl's new restaurant has been open, what, a month? Uh, Not even a month? Nine days making money. Nine depositing days. depositing money. It's beautiful. It's on it's awesome. 15th and 9th Avenue. 15th in New York City. between 9th and 10th next to the juggernaut Google. Yeah. And it's around the corner from my other favorite New York City restaurant. Budokan. 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 Which I'm sorry to plug another restaurant, but oh, I do like it. That's my right. buddy from Philly. Steven Starr. Steven Starr. I thought you, yeah. you were going to talk. I thought you meant Starbucks. The roastery? That, Hannah that, took me in that place that last night. $330,000. I was telling you a story yesterday. <laughs> did he tell me the funny... Did he tell you the story no, about this I, place? I, I think I told you the story. So, so we're next door to yeah. the Starbucks roastery. It's a which super is Reserve. Store. Reserve roastery. It's pretty so, much a whole city block. It's like... Yeah, it is. It's actually... It's a corner. It's a city corner. And yeah. there's a, a liquor bar in there, and there is roasting, and it's like... And you could buy a Starbucks sweatshirt, which if I ever saw with you, oh I would give you Hannah, a fucking DVD. Dude, Hannah last night... I picked up something and was so offended by it. They had a deconstructed Starbucks logo keychain. So it was a keychain <gasps> with every element <gasps> from the Starbucks logo Ew. on its own little uh, charm. How self-absorbed are you as a company? It was yeah. It's offensive. Yeah. <laughs> it's offensive. That's Ew. offensive. That is offensive. Tell me the story. Um, wait, so the story, first, it started with a story that Carl told me because he was apologizing for his paper straws. Yeah. And then he goes, don't worry, they all come in plastic tubs. <laughs> yeah, paper like I'm sitting there, I'm like, <laughs> you give me all these paper straws, they come in a plastic tub. Is that real? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I got the order and I'm like, get the fuck <laughs> out of here! Come on. Yes! And, and then it's wrapped in plastic. And then it's all plastic! <laughs> the only thing paper is the straw. <laughs> because the humidity... Will destroy oh, yeah, the, the straws straw. during shipping. <laughs> but, so yeah, it's oh, all yeah, the plastic. first package of it they shipped in like a nice little brown paper. Right, and they opened up, and it was Senor, Senor, it's mold. No, no, it's mold. No bueno, <laughs> no bueno, amigo. Necesito <laughs> plástico. That is perfect. Yeah. That's here, a metaphor but, for the uh, dumbness these stupid of that. idiots in New York City. As long as they got a, a, a paper straw, they think they're doing something for the environment. Six tons I, of I, garbage I, a day. Dude, this fucking I, island produces. But, and I gotta say it. I said it on a past podcast. You take your paper straw and shove it in your big giant plastic <laughs> cup. I mean, yes. Hannah and I walked down the beach in L.A. and one of the, like, I get depressed. And well, well, we we bring it back. We actually walked down the beach I and pick up trash. The other day and he got and people like thank us all the yes. time. They stop us and thank us for doing it. And it's like an activity we do together. It's not that big of a deal. We find a lot. The most things we find by far are straws, bottle caps, and lids for cups. And my ex wife. By far. What about the uh, the balloons? We don't find that many balloons. Happy birthday! Although not Father's that many. Day, congrats. Not no? that many. Oh, probably more in the city than we're on the beach. So probably it's it's not stuck. out on Long Island. It's all balloons. Oh really? Okay. What? He's, he's got money. He lives in Venice. <laughs> the, no, the wind. <laughs> the wind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point is, like, I believe in cleaning up the environment, but I believe in solving problems from biggest yeah, to smallest. Course, right. And there's a lot of resources being spent on the straw thing. But the funny part is, tell him about the Starbucks. Part. So the Starbucks next door is the rent, just so you get an idea of New York City, the rent is $330,000 a month. They got to sell a lot of coffee. Almost, it's almost the size of Opie's apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so it's three hundred thirty thousand dollars a month, and they brought this superstar architect to design the place. Yeah, and it's beautiful. It has a bar and little machines that move beans from one side to another, so that they make a hundred percent sure that everyone has terrible coffee. And it's just, it's perfect, right? Starbucks Nirvana. You forgot to talk about the pizza. They have pizza from Italy. Right. That's not from Italy. Because I know the people that make it, and they're not from Italy. <laughs> but I'm like, you ever in Italy? He's like, why Why are you crying? Where are your pants? <laughs> but, but what don't they have? But, so my restaurant is the building adjacent to the Starbucks. And they had to rent the top two floors of my building for storage because the designer, when they designed the, this, the biggest Starbucks in the world, had no idea that they needed a place for cups <laughs> or stirs or that stupid mocha powder or all this. So they, they spend over $40,000 a month to really? keep all the stuff in this building. 
Wow. <laughs> we were podcasting the other day from here, and they opened up the giant garage door. You saw it. It was it was drums filled uh, with syrup. <laughs> drums, drums, drums of syrup. You couldn't give me anything from that store. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up on Starbucks <coughs> ten years ago. My dad was one of the original investors no. of Starbucks. Wow. My dad you. was in between jobs in 1990. Two maybe or three ninety one ninety two early ninety maybe ninety one ninety two, and he went to Seattle because who who did he interview with in Seattle? Someone that was like it was like like Boeing or or something. It was an industry he didn't know anything about. It yeah. might have been Boeing or something in Seattle to interview to be an executive there. And he came back and he was like, you know, I tried this coffee and it was so good. And I think they had five stores and my oh dad invested my. in you imagine? Yeah. And he got out around, I don't know, early 2000s. Oh, my God. That's out. perfect. Yeah. My dad's right? real, he's real smart. Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. He did good. He did good on that one. So Starbucks. I met, I met his dad. He looked at me like I was another, I'm from fucking space. <laughs> I'm at the wedding. I'm with some crazy girl from Trailer, New Jersey. And I'm like, what's up, Matt's dad? Like, didn't have a name or nothing. I'm like, big fan. Did he yell at you? My hedges are crooked. (laughs) (laughs) No, he's actually one of the most down to earth. Mad chill. Yeah, one of the most down to earth. I was just going for a rich joke. And I, and I, I, I always expected my dad to be the kind of guy who was so chill at home because he got out all his crazy at the office. Yeah. But uh, I've I've talked to people who work for him, and he and he's uh, apparently very level headed at work. Well. Nice. Can I? So Starbucks. Yeah. I was a huge fan of Starbucks because I'm a huge coffee drinker, yeah. and their their product used to be really good. I think it probably was better no, than it was, was at, I, I, at some time. I I have I can't prove this, but as a coffee drinker, somewhere in there. They decided to get a less quality bean, probably because they realized they were selling so many sugary drinks that the actual coffee bean didn't matter as That's much. Probably true. I don't know if this is true, but then the coffee started tasting burnt and not the same anymore. This is—I have no idea. This is—I wouldn't be surprised assumption. if they did that. It sounds like a big corporate thing to do. And, and, and they left a giant hole for real coffee drinkers, yeah. and that's why all these mom and pop st- uh, stores are popping up right. all over. I New think York it was the same thing again. that happened when like Coors and Anheuser Busch started buying those medium. Beers like Killian's and all yeah. those beers Killians. started. Remember Killian yes. was kind of good for a while. Yeah, the red and, one. Yeah, and then it got bought up by Coors or whoever, and it became shit. I was, and that left room for the micro brews to yeah. come in underneath. What happened to the red ambers? I was a big fan of the red ambers. Ambers had a Amber minute, beers. didn't they? I'm trying I like to remember them. some of the other ones I used to drink. I I uh, kind of got away uh, from uh, beer. Uh, uh, Watneys or uh, uh, Watneys? Oh shit. Like Yingling, if we were talking about yeah. Philly, Yingling was yeah. my jam when it's I the lived in Philly. America. Yeah. Ying, we used to go to get kegs when I was I went to Penn. So when okay. we were in college, we'd go to the brewery and buy kegs from the fucking brewery. Right. And they, I think it, in the early 2000s, they were $40 for a keg of Yingling. Oh, it was amazing. Nice. Um, Did you like Philly? It was a great place to spend four years and then have an exit plan. Oh, really? <laughs> right. Yeah, I thought it was a fun town. It had just enough... Shit for four years yeah. of mayhem, and I like going to visit. Though you just drove up from Philly, I went you to the uh, Phillies Mets game. Nice, and I'm the only Mets fan in the whole. Pl- <laughs> no, Hope he's in everything. I'm you know, shit. Were, were you wearing a Mets hat? No, I, I pretty much. I'm still wearing the same clothes that I from yesterday. Oh, God, I'm, I'm glad here, I'm, brother. I'm glad I'm, I've got <laughs> the clothes, the same no, clothes club. Uh, there was 20 of us, the whole family, oh, extended nice. family, and uh, nephews and nieces, and it was it was great and. My in-laws snuck the Philly shit onto my kids. I'm like, you sons of bitches. <laughs> and they're all happy. Like, they're happy they got, you know. I, I love that stadium. It's a really good it's stadium. Gorgeous, right? And yeah, then they let really the kids stadium. run the base. Yeah, oh, they did? That's awesome. I mean, yeah, we had to wait an hour outside in the 95-degree heat. But oh, that was that, a, it. that was a hookup? That's not something they do? Or that's something that they... It was something anyone could do. Oh, okay, cool. And we're thinking, oh, this would be fun. After the game, we'll just casually run around the bases. And so we go to the, uh, the people down there, and they're like, the line starts there. I'm like, <gasps> you're pointing at the horizon. <laughs> I went. We went to. We were just in Rome and went to the Colosseum with no tickets. You should see what the line. The line you looked. could just walk into the Colosseum. You had to buy tickets. You can walk I didn't in. Know and that. Buy, oh yeah, it's an operation. You can't really? even. You know, you can't even. What the Colosseum didn't surprise me because when I was a kid and went to Italy, we had to buy a ticket there as well. Yeah. What surprised me was the forum. 
like you know the Roman Forum, yeah. which is a big pile of rocks like outside. You have to buy a ticket to that to which, look at a pile of rocks to go into the Forum, which I thought was surprising. Uh, so what, what do you think of the Colosseum? Colosseum is really cool. Yeah, the Colosseum. Tell me about is, it. Have you never been to Rome? Really? The Colosseum is amazing because. How much money have you saved up? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ghosts in here. <laughs> you can't, you, you know, you, it's, like, it's like the pyramids or any of that other really ancient <clears throat> but, but amazingly engineered structures. It's like, it's the one thing to, to look at the construction of it, but it's another to think about, you know, yeah. computerless, hand-done right. geometries and engineering. And, and it's, it's really amazing. And it's also amazing is how people really haven't changed all that much from then to now like there's a display of some of the original like uh, benches from the Colosseum which were marble or stone right but there's just graffiti like carved into them like you know I fucked Maximus's wife (laughs) seriously I mean literally it actually says that it says I fucked Maximus's wife is one of them and it's like someone's got a small dick and it's like in Latin graffiti carved in it's like whoever's sitting here right now is a tiny dick oh my god it's like the the beginning of the the beginning of the Twitter trolls it's like Twitter trolls yeah like it's we're just the same people yeah that's awesome that's good to know no. Yeah, and it's it, good to know we were always assholes. Yeah, oh, we're st- and we're still know. assholes. Yeah, right. but I actually, what was the one thing you took away from the Coliseum? That one thing where you like that wow, was that was that, the one thing. Yeah, but I, and also, I mean, it, it is a, it's a beautiful thing to see. You you can't believe that. I mean, what's amazing is how tall it is and like how much taller it was. Like it had a wooden structure on top of it that okay. was like bleachers. Okay, that looked super sketchy and like the constructions. <laughs> But it, it was really tall. Like, it's as tall as a, as a modern football stadium, or maybe even taller. It's, it's really amazing. I went to Athens and saw the Acropolis. Yeah, yeah. That. That's pretty. Oh, that's with that cool girl story. that you hated. Yeah. Your, your ex wife? <laughs> I know, I didn't have an ex wife. <laughs> Jesus. No, he, he dated know. a girl way too long. Way too long. Oh. Because, you know, I, I grew up uh, with my dad enabling my mom, so I might have uh, picked up a trick or two. Oh, you weren't married before, sorry. <laughs> no, no. You're I, not married, right? I was with a girl for a, a, a bit, and oh. uh, we went to Athens, and she thought I was going to ask her to marry her at the Acropolis, and she started crying as we're going back to the, uh, uh, no. the hotel, and I'm like, uh, what the fuck? Oh, way to set your own expectations and there, sweetheart. Like, oh, like, we barely like each other. Oh, my like, God, that's hilarious. You thought I was going to ask you to marry you? Are you crazy? What I really recommend is Tuscany. We went to Tuscany, and that was the shit. Yeah. Tuscany, because Tuscany is these medieval villages on these mountaintops with these beautiful kind of olive and nice. vineyards below them. Right. And you can see them. They're almost in like a straight line between Florence and Rome. Right. And you can see like how they brought the wine from right. place to place. And we we hiked on the Vinsanto wine trail where they right. had been carrying wow. this wine for 2,000 years. Wow. And, it, and you know, you're eating, That's you're cool. eating food that even by Italy's stand, you know, most people would go to Rome and go, yes, this is Italian food. Right. Yeah. You go to Tuscany, you're like, fucking Rome is a joke. Rome Rome's a dump. Yeah, for the food. The food in Tuscany is so next level. The, the thing when I was in Tuscany, what I realized what bothered me was when something bothers me, I'm, I'm wiped out, right? It's like when I was in Egypt, every time you go next to a pyramid, there would be some fucking asshole from Ohio talking to you about aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to look at the Sphinx and like, those aliens made them. I'm like, oh, fucking just die, bro. Let me enjoy this fucking thing. <laughs> so the same thing, Tuscany has become self-aware. You know what I mean? On how beautiful it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you're there and like, I'm like some guys telling me like a two hour story of be stick I like some yeah. steak and I'm like this is all bullshit bro like you got this from Cisco <laughs> you know what I mean? like it's not this is not really true yeah. you're not massaging the cow right. and all the tourists are like did you hear that <laughs> unbelievable the coals are the Roman coals I'm like that's fucking Kingsford this is bullshit <laughs> I'm freaking out and that, that whole area has become software and it's so beautiful that you have to have like it's like watching a movie you yeah. have to just let it go and deal yeah. with it like there was some the cypress trees and no there's a uh, there, self aware is the right word yeah. for sure but it's the beautiful. olive oil tastes like nowhere else in the world oh no, fucking the, olives again no I don't <laughs> like olives but the olive oil is no. fucking amazing it's, it's so you're in Tuscany yeah but going to I mean just geographically 
everything fucking that grows there is delicious. <laughs> yeah. Like you drop a piece of gum and three days later there's a gum tree. <laughs> that is the most perfect gum tree you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> yeah. I did a, a cruise of the Greek islands. If I had to hear about olives one more time. Oh, well, the Greeks are yeah. lemons, yeah. olives, yeah. and yeah. fucking olives. rosemary. If you yeah, take yeah. those away, the Greeks would just die. The first, <laughs> the first, the first thing they said. Like yeah. They invented, the Greeks invented a lot of stuff, but then they stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? right. Yeah. The first thing they said from the airport to the hotel, they pointed out the goddamn olive trees. Oh, yeah. God, that's so Christ. funny. They, they love those trees. They love olives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's annoying. Dude, I like went, a green olive every once in a while. Shut up. In your little that is salad. The upper no, right. side. <laughs> Yo, that salad like, you served me last night, by the way. Oh, the, the strawberry, the tomato, strawberries. and avocado salad, yeah. which shouldn't work at all and totally does. It worked. Totally works. Thank you. I could use one of those right about now. Yeah, we'll get it going. Let's, we'll finish this up and I'll be literally or ordering food through the pockets. <laughs> <laughs> that's passive aggressive. You know, you know, wow, that sounds good. I'd like to I'd have like to try that. <laughs> the thing about Athens, I loved how they incorporated the, the ruins into modern day buildings. Yeah. Like you'll be in a hotel and all of a sudden there's a giant glass wall with ruins behind yeah, it. Yeah, it yeah, couldn't yeah. move anything. There was so a couple places where they do the glass floor so too and there's cool, like excavations man. under them. I, I really like old, like living in California and I say this a lot, the right. one we don't have any old things. That's the one problem with California that or it's not a problem, but it's my right. problem. Right. When we go to Tuscany, it's like you're sitting in a restaurant, it's like, when was this built? Oh, 950, huh? Okay. <laughs> you know, it's like people have been tossing fucking pasta in wheels of cheese in this room for seven hundred years. You know, so that, that's I really like that. But that's America in general. When when you travel yeah, abroad, nothing old. when you travel abroad, also yeah. like this castle's from the year two. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? I was in my friend's house in England. <laughs> like, I just uh, it's just a house, like right? yeah. it's, it's a nice house, but nothing special. And it's and it, literally his house was three hundred years older than our country. Wow. You know, yeah, that's so cool. probably be three beer three hundred years after. Every time in Europe, though, I'm trying to figure out if people are rich or not because you don't know because they live in the same fucking house for like thirteen generations. <laughs> so like yeah. the whole time, I'm like, so what do you do, bro? Like, sick house. I like that you don't have windows. <laughs> like, what? Uh, you have a job? <laughs> and it's crazy. When I lived in Italy, we would go from house to house. Like, let's go to Vincenzo's house and have cheese. I'm like, this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> what are we doing today? Right. I hate the guy with that weird fucking grape-shaped guitar. I don't want to do any of this. Grape-shaped guitar. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Loot? Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like a giant, ba- it's like a baritone loot. Yeah, like, bass like, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, come on, die. Dring. I'm like, I hate that fucking sound. <laughs> are we going to the mall? Because I need a fucking Mach 3. And we got to do a lot of shit. Is there a store? Like, I'm just annoyed the whole time. Oh, my God. Can I say, so funny. I, I was lucky enough when I was at um, Sirius XM, I got to see, like, a... Pretty much a private concert with Sting. Yeah. When he was going through his loot f- phase. <laughs> was, was he playing it? He was he playing it? He had I, I remember he had like the greatest lutist. Yeah, yeah. Did you say lutist? Yeah. In the world. And I think he was just uh, singing with the guy. Was that in I like think, the, No, he was playing with them. Was the that in the fishbowl well. at Sirius? Like there? It, or? It, it was in Lincoln Center. Oh, okay. The, cool. the, the space that overlooks actually uh, uh, Lincoln's cool. uh, uh, Columbus Circle. Yeah, yeah. Columbus Oof. Circle. I made out with a girl at a place called. Um, that doesn't matter. So, so, wait, things <laughs> loot. So yeah. I went with Jim Norton. We're in the audience, and we're just getting madder and madder <laughs> at these loot songs. Like, what is this <laughs> garbage? And then he's doing message in a bottle, like on think, the loot, on the loot, uh, but it's all a, a new arrangement, oh, and no. everyone else is like, "Oh my god, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard!" And we're like, "Oh, this stinks!" Uh, <laughs> and then backstage, he got really mad at me because, you know, I was a huge police fan growing up. I'm with my now wife. Yeah. And we went through the line to get our picture. And I'm like, holy shit, the only chance I'm ever going to get to meet Sting and get a picture. And my uh, flash didn't go off. So, so I was do it again. stupid enough to go, can we do that again? 
I have the picture of the <laughs> disgust in his face. Oh. You gotta ask for a second picture. <laughs> I've, I have a couple of real disgusted celebrity faces with, <laughs> with me. Jack, Jackie Stewart, the Formula One driver, yes! like the legend. Yes! You have never seen Jackie Stewart less happy to be anywhere than in the picture I oh took. Oh my with him. god. I, <laughs> I was walking bad. down, I was walking down 63rd, 63rd, I think. I was walking down with a buddy of mine who's just completely practical and pragmatic yeah and there's sting coming down you know walking down the street and i'm like yo yo that's sting 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 he goes fuck that dude he's wearing a blouse it's so grounding you know yeah, like, yeah. you're right it's like old man with a blouse like well, that's, that's how steven tyler dresses oh man. yeah oh, every picture God. of him he looks like he's about to go on coffee talk he looks like a soccer mom who's just <laughs> about to cheat <laughs> oh, i was gonna come up with some but I'll, i'm letting you have that one. Yeah, <laughs> let's get him on. no uh, outside la cabana when we were um i was coming up you were inside <coughs> i saw kenny g walk by oh, really? yeah, and so the guy's still sporting the stupid Kenny G hair. hair. Well, he has to. Because he wants to be recognized. If he changed the hair, if he changed the hair, he couldn't do it. Like he's, Adam Duritz from the Counting Crows, he's still got to do oh, the Oh, he treads. has to do it? Yeah, you got to, you got to, if you, if you, you, you ever seen, you seen D. Snyder recently? No. He looks, he looks like he's on his way to the fucking, come on, feel the noise music. I video. just had four words. <laughs> Coolio. <laughs> <laughs> Coolio still Coolio doing looks the like thing. a remote controlled dad <laughs> Robot. <laughs> Did you guys see the video of the robot? By the way, that came out. It was fake. There's I a say video. It's fake. The Boston Dynamics. The video of the robot where they're, back? Where they're yeah. throwing. Yeah, that one was fake. Yeah, and it's fake. It was. Okay. But can you tell him how annoyed I was at Kenny G's hair? <laughs> so you don't understand, like, but he, like, like the way Opie's thing. saying it now is like for radio, like podcast, or but this is Opie. <laughs> so we're outside, I'm having a cigarette. My life is in shambles, right? And I'm sitting there, and I got a $90 booger in my nose. I'm a mess. Oh, Jesus. Fucking Opie goes, I saw Kenny G out here. <laughs> Still has the hair. <laughs> And I'm just it's smoking. like a sign. And I'm just yeah. I'm smoking a cigarette. Just like what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, Kenny G, same hair. <laughs> I guess he keeps the hair because he wants to kill. Still look like Kenny G. <laughs> I'm smoking a cigarette. I'm like. See you later, up. <laughs> <laughs> just the what calmness of it, and I'm just it annoyed me. Just. <laughs> Kenny G annoyed me. Hope he's telling me that he saw Kenny G. Starbucks, like there was nothing positive. But there's no reason like, to keep the Kenny G here. <laughs> you know he's got to oh, do it. He's got to do it. Why? Because otherwise, ah, because for the exact reason you accurately described. That's why. I guess. Remember Jennifer Grey, Dirty Dancing. Oh, yeah. no, killed changed, her career. Killed her career. Changed the look. Career over. And she was way hotter. Yeah, the nose job. You ever too. see a picture of um, Zoe Deschanel with her bangs not done? Fucking different human. Done. Not the same human. When you commit to a look like that, you're yeah. fucking stuck Stupid with it. Stupid Raleigh bro. fingers did the the, uh, <laughs> the handlebar muscle yeah. late in his life. I'm like, no. Yeah, you either got to be fluid from the beginning, right. or you commit to that look Shake forever. That shit. Yeah. Like, I was uh, I was with Guy Guy Fieri one day. Uh, he's stuck too, and he <laughs> and he, he had the funniest thing. Frosted so, tips for life. Right. I have two stories. But it was really funny. But the first story is I was with Guy, and somebody goes. Why, um, you know, how do you feel about, like, you know, everyone knows your hair and whatever. He goes, when I'm not famous, I'll just cut my hair and you'll never fucking see me again. Perfect. Perfect. It was the like best. That. Perfect. And then another story is when he landed in Vegas and his buddy has a plane called the Global Express. Oh, that's a, yeah. If you are familiar with Jay-Z, yeah. I'm in Boeing Jets, Global Express, out the country, but the blueberries still connect. Right. <laughs> So Global Express is the biggest thing you can get before you get one of those 737s that fucking <laughs> Like Travolta's guy. Yeah. <laughs> so the plane's gorgeous, right? Two bedrooms. Shot. I mean, literally, it's an apartment, right? And land in Vegas, and there's a bunch of people in the FTO, whatever, in the little waiting room. Yeah. And they're, like, rich, too. But they're not rich like this dude, right? Yeah. And they come out. 
Oh my God, is that the new Gold Global Express? That's beautiful. Can I look inside of it? And the guy looks at him and goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the richest thing I ever saw. And I look at the guys and I'm like, hi, you motherfuckers. I was in there. I took a shit there. Like, I mean, you thought you were rich enough to see so You thought you were rich plane. enough. Yeah. He oh, said, no. Oh my, and, the, and this plane was, un, it, I mean, it was unbelievable. It was un, like just... It had Have you seen uh, Air, Air Drake? <laughs> no. Drake had, got a 737, which I don't think he bought. I think he leased, nah, they leased it. But it's like, you know, it's a fucking house in there. And it's fucking painted Air Drake. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, and when the Raptors won, he was doing fucking just circling downtown, having a party at, at the parade. He was circling the parade yeah. on, his, on his 737. That's, That's fucking cool. heavy. That's, cool. <laughs> That's heavy. He made me root for the Warriors. <laughs> Drake individual. Yes. Mean Guy Cook. I don't like Drake. his music at all, but he seems like a nice I guy. I like his I mean me and me and uh, Guy cooked for Drake um in Toronto. It was really funny. So when I traveled a lot with Guy, you know, you stay in the same hotels and and we we were staying at a high end hotel and they know you so you get upgraded immediately. So I get on the elevator and they said, Carl, you'll get your suite and it's great. So I go up to my suite, heated floors, Toronto. I mean, Toronto is just Toronto's a cool city. Yeah. Cool city, right? Food's kind of weird, but whatever. That's for another day. A lot, so, of, a lot of Asians, too. Yeah. Good Asian, good Japanese food. Most of the world, I hope you. I'm starting to notice that. Are you, are you, are you yeah. catching on? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot. So, um, so, um, I go up on the elevator and beautiful room and you know me I want to have a cigarette right so I'm like alright let me go and I open the, the little electric curtain you know it opens and I start hearing ah, like all this screaming I'm like what the fuck is going on so I open the patio door and I walk inside and there must have been I don't know a thousand girls downstairs looking up <laughs> to my room and collectively they all go ah <laughs> and I'm like, and I just like, oh my! I, it felt like the biggest pain I've ever felt in my life. You're like, anybody? Anybody? And I just nobody was that. It was just like, ah! Oh God. And I slink back. So <laughs> not Drake. And then I figure out that Drake and Justin Bieber are having a concert in Toronto, yeah. and they're staying in the suites, and I'm fucking Shrek in right. the middle of this. Just the fucking the disappointment of a thousand women oh, was so yeah. powerful. All year just, went, just I couldn't even breathe. I was like, this, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. Oh my god! Uh, listen, guys, I have to call this show because I'm running low on computer battery. Damn all right, we could do another hour. I know. Right. This is what happens when we do a show. Is we right. could probably do. Is we could do double. Yeah. So, but the experiment works. We'll share this show. We are sharing. We're sharing People the show. Hearing this. OB Radio Podcast, Smoking Tire Podcast combo. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Drunk Carl. And Drunk Carl. Sabor <laughs> Chef on Instagram. It's one of the best follows you ever fucking have. Uh, OB Radio on Instagram. The Smoking Tire you on like Instagram. Okay. OB Radio Podcast. Right. You tw- are you twice a week or once a week? Ah. You're whenever. <laughs> are you whenever you want? Is yeah, that when you do a show? No, I try to do Mondays and Thursdays. All I right. try. Mondays and Thursdays for you, Tuesdays and Thursdays for me. Nice. Uh, thanks, Ope. Thanks for driving up from Philly, dude. I appreciate it. Thanks for dinner last fan. night. was spectacular, Carl. Uh, come eat at La Cubana, uh, West 15th Street and 9th Avenue, next to the giant Starbucks that doesn't have any closets. <laughs> it's so weird. It's a closetless Starbucks. Um, and and the paper straws come uh, wrapped in plastic. That's so crazy. Is that real? Yes! Yeah, it's that's, real. that's hilarious, dude. Because the moisture will kill them. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> and now of it was an educational do. show. Now we've learned something. We've All learned right. something. That's our show. I'm back in studio next week. I'm Bye, s- fools. I'm single. Thanks for your support, Matt. <laughs>